What up everybody? Back again here with another volume lesson. Today we're going to be focusing on finding the missing information in our problem. So let's open up our box and see what objective Instructor Beats has for us today. Your objective today, today I will be able to find the missing piece of information by using my volume formula. To be able to do that, you have to remember what your volume formula is, which we've talked about for several lessons now. Our volume formula is volume equals area of the base times the height. And then sometimes when they don't tell you the area of the base, you have to decompose that into the length and the width. So our other volume formula that we can use, which will give us the same answer, is volume equals length times width times height. These are the type of questions we did last lesson when we are finding the volume of rectangular prisms using the formula. And they gave you all the information you needed to find the volume, right? They gave you the length, the width, and the height, or they gave you the area of the base and the height. And you could just plug those into your volume formula and solve for the volume. Today, we're actually going to be going backwards. We're going to be giving you the volume, and then you're going to be looking for one of these missing pieces. So here's an example of the type of problem we're going to be doing today. The question says, this cereal box can hold 96 cubic inches of cereal. Instruct a cereal, huh? It's got to be pretty good. What is the length of the box? So first of all, if you are a loyal Instructa Beat follower, you know we love our sides check. So we're going to start with a statement. We're going to say the length of the box is blank, inches. And when we go back, we're going to be looking for anything about inches in our problem. It tells me right here that the volume is 96 cubic inches. Now it didn't say the words that the volume is 96 cubic inches. But because it's cubic units, I know that this number is my volume. That's how many cubic inches fill the box, right? That's what they're telling you when they tell you that it's cubic. Okay, so this is my volume. It also in my picture, if I find my peace sign right here, tells me my width and it tells me my height. Now, my height is opposite parallel, so that's going to be 6 inches and my width is going to be four inches and I'm looking for the length. So all I'm going to do is take my information and plug it into my volume formula. So my volume formula is volume is going to equal the area of the base times the height. All right. Now I don't see any information about the area of my base. I don't see square inches anywhere. I didn't label it in my picture, which means I'm actually going to have to decompose this into length times width. And now I'm going to have to multiply that times the height. So my volume formula I'm going to use for this question is volume equals length times width times height. Now it told me right here my volume was 96 cubic inches. So for V, all I'm going to do is plug in 96 because I already know my volume. It told me what it was. All right. I don't know my length because that's what the question is asking me. It said the length of the box is blank inches. So I'm going to put a question mark here for my length. I do know my width. My width was four inches because I can view that on the picture and I know my height. My height was six inches. So now I've plugged in all the information I know into my formula. All I need to do is use my math knowledge to help me solve for my missing piece of information. So the first thing I want to do is I like to combine what I know. So I'm going to rewrite this. I know 96 equals question mark times and I know four times six is 24. Now I have 96 equals some number times 24. Here's where you can be a good test taker if this is a multiple choice test. If you have four different answer choices, you could multiply each of those times 24 and see which one equals 96. That's a perfectly acceptable test taking strategy. That's just called being smart when you're taking a test. If you don't have multiple choice answers for you to plug in, you need to remember that multiplication and division are fact families. They're inverse operations of each other. So I can rewrite 96 equals something times 24 as 96 divided by 24 is going to tell me my length. When you're looking for a missing factor, you rewrite it as division. Now this is not a division lesson, so I'm going to solve this part for you. Okay, 96 divided by 24 is 4. So I know that 4 is my question mark. This is the piece that I was missing. So when I go back up here, I know that my length had to be 4, just like my width was. So the length of the box is 4 inches. So to solve these questions, you use the volume formula that you need. You plug in the information that it gives you, and then you just use your good math skills to solve for the missing piece. You combine what you know, and then when you're missing a factor, 
you know that you rewrite it using your fact family knowledge as division and divide to help you solve for your missing piece. Let's do another one together. So here it says the flower bed can hold 405 cubic centimeters of dirt. The height is 3 centimeters. What is the area of the base? So my statement's going to say the area of the base is blank. And I know because I'm talking about area, my units have to be squared. And my units for this question were centimeters. So I'm going to say is blank square centimeters. When I go back to look for this, I'm going to be looking for anything about centimeters. Okay. And because I know it's talking about area of the base, anything about volume. It tells me right here that my flower bed can hold 405 cubic centimeters of dirt. Because this was saying that it was cubic units, I know that this number here is my volume. So I want to annotate it using the word volume. I know my height is 3 centimeters, just like it had in the picture. And I want to know the area of the base. So my next step is to write down my volume formula. Volume equals area of the base times the height. Now for this question, I know my volume, I know my height, and it's actually asking me for the area of the base, which means I don't need to break this apart to length times width. I can just plug in my information right now. My volume, it told me, was 405. Okay, I'm looking for my area of the base. Instead of using a question mark, I'm just going to use this as a variable and leave the words area of the base and I'm multiplying that by my height which was 3. Now I've plugged in all my information. I'm looking for a missing factor which means I need to rewrite this as a division problem. So I'm going to rewrite this as 405 divided by 3 and that's going to tell me my missing factor which is going to be the area of the base. Or again you should know how to do 405 divided by 3 uh, but because we're focusing really on the volume today and not dividing when I divided 405 divided by 3 my answer is 135 so 135 equals the area of the base. If I have three layers of 135 that would give me the volume of 405 cubic centimeters. So again, because this is an area of the base, it has to be square centimeters, which is why I wrote it. And I'm going to say the area of the base is 135 square centimeters. Again, following the same steps, using your formula, plugging in your information, and solving for your missing piece. All right, let's do this you try problem. Again, if you are ready to do this one by yourself, go ahead and push pause, solve it, and then push play, and you can check it. If you're not ready, you can do it with me. Hopefully you just paused it and tried to solve it and at least gave effort. Let's do it together so you can check your answer. Right here it's telling me that the volume of the prison is 1,288 cubic feet. Again, I know that this is volume for two reasons. One, it told me the volume and two, it said cubic units, right? So for this instance, the units are feet. So cubic feet, which means this number is my volume. If I filled this box with 1,288 cubic feet, it would be completely full. It says use the information label in the picture to help you find the width. So you're looking for the width. So your statement can just say the width is blank feet. Okay, because again, your unit's feet. I can see my information right here, right? So right here, this would be my peace sign. I can find my height. My height is eight. I know that my length is going to be opposite parallel, which is 23. And then I'm looking for my width. So I'm going to use a question mark to help me solve that. So I'm going to write down the volume formula, area of the base times the height. I know I need to decompose my area of my base into my length and my width because my question's asking me for the width. Okay, so I need to use my longer formula here. So I'm going to say volume equals length times width times height. And now I'm just going to plug in what I know. I know my volume or V is going to be 1,288. I know my length is 23 feet. I don't know my width. So again, I'm just going to leave W as a variable instead of writing a question mark. It means the same thing. But as we get closer and closer to doing algebra, we want to know how to use these variables. And then my height, I'm going to have eight layers because that's what it told me on my rectangular prism. Now I have a variable between 23 and 8, but I know that because of my commutative property, it doesn't matter which way I multiply the factor. So I'm going to combine what I know. I'm going to multiply 23 times 8, and I'm going to get 184. Okay, and then I need to multiply that by my width, and when I do that, it should equal 1,288. Again, now I'm back to just knowing my multiplication and division fact families. I'm looking for a missing factor, which means I need to rewrite this as division. 1,288 divided by 184 is going to tell me my missing factor, which is my width. 
and when I divide those, I get a width of seven feet. Now this is a little bit above fifth grade math, so if you need to use a calculator to do that division, that's totally fine. But if you understand how to divide, you should be able to divide by three digit divisors, no problem. So my width is seven feet, and now I have found my missing information. So if I did 23 times seven, that would give me the area of the base, and I multiply that by eight layers, and I would have a volume of 1,200. Thank you so much for checking our video today. We really appreciate it. If you haven't done so already, please like and subscribe. We'd love to have you join our Instructor Beats family. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We would love to have you check us out there. Please check out our volume song if you need a little bit of a reminder. As always, we appreciate you. Instructor Beats, out.